Hello everyone, welcome to the King of Anime podcast. We are back. It's another chill week. Not talking about much this week, you know, just Vinland Saga, Carolyn Tuesday, and uh, Monica Magica. So, yeah, we don't, we're missing EA this week. He's off uh, saving the world from space pirates. Uh, but we still have Satsuki. Introduce yourself. Hello, guys. I'm still here. Satsuki. Mm -hmm. And missing EA right now. Need my senpai. Yeah. But he's 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 dealing with those bodacious space space pirates. So uh, he's doing it for us. He's, yeah. And he, he's not only doing it for us. He's doing it for America and the whole world besides Canada. So he's doing good. send them gifts. Exactly. Yeah. He has a PO box. Google it. I guess I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> Search everything animated, you'll find it. Yeah, the, well, there's another kind of oh, incredible yeah. YouTuber named Everything Animated. The sexy one. That's the one you send it to. Yeah, yeah, the sexy one. Not the, uh, not the, yeah. I don't want to talk bad about the other Everything <laughs> Animated. I don't know him. <laughs> or her. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about Vindland Saga, episode 10. Ragnarok, which is not a good Thor movie. Prince Canute, well, yeah. I'm not sure what people think about Thor. I feel like I feel like it's okay to talk shit about Thor, but it, it's fine around me at least. Oh, okay, okay. Well, some people get a little angry about that. I didn't actually know there was a lot of Thor fans who liked the Thor movies. I I did not like any of them. Uh, I think I liked the first one. Um, but it's definitely not my favorite, like, you know, Iron Man. I, actually, I think Hulk is the worst, at least just for me. But mm, Thor was, it was definitely not better than, definitely not better than the Captain America movies or Iron Man. Hmm. At least in its totality for me. QRW6 is, is actually watching Bodacious Space Pirates. And I must say, Dang. I want to as well. But... Time does not permit me to do such. Anyways, Vinland Saga Episode 10, Ragnarok. Prince Canute is captured by Thorkel, and when Asklad is informed of this, he decides to go save Canute and get the golden glory to himself and all the others. Uh, this episode was pretty freaking awesome. The episode started off with Thorkel throwing boulders, <laughs> and I thought, yeah. I thought this guy is perfect. I love it. We need Thorkel because he's he's a anime guy, okay? Like that breaks the whole historical, you know, accuracy. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure, at least not that I know of, there's not anyone named Thorkel who could do that, who could toss boulders like he's a catapult or that um, big. Yeah. <laughs> he's a monster to say the least but yeah I, I like him because he like I said he's an anime character this is not something that you would get in any other you know show that was trying to be realistic yeah yeah he's uh you bring up a good point yeah this is still an anime um and I guess this uh I guess this is further of the you're right probably to remind the viewer like hey we're still like we're still well within this medium so don't like expect like historical accuracy with this story yeah as long as you're not like flying or you know using kamehameha's i think yeah. we'll be fine although i you know you know like you know there's like those games where they like do like a mashup of a bunch of characters i would actually yep. like to to like have like goku versus thorfinn just to like see it happen. <laughs> they they're gonna have to just take away Goku's everything. Like Goku's you're gonna everything. have to take away Super Saiyan. Yeah, it's just too much. <laughs> it's a transmission, everything. But like you know how like video games, they they like they like don't abide by the show's logic. So what if you just had yeah. like, you know, like the people that made like the Injustice games and the Mortal Kombat games just like 
Thorfinn with his knife stabbing Goku repeatedly. That'd be pretty fun. I'd be yeah, that. Did he he just he just survives multiple Kamehameha's. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Well, I mean, you know, in Street Fighter, they throw Hadoukens like candy, so you yeah. can block them with just, you know, a kick or something, so it's fine. Um, so, yeah, there's this also this whole thing with, uh, with Thorfinn waking up, and he's like, it's like a dream, obviously. Immediately, I was like, at first I thought, oh, is this a flashback? And then when he was like, what, what's mm-hmm. going on? It's like, oh, this is like a, this is a dream. And I knew where it was going, like, immediately. I knew they were going to do, like, everybody was going to be there. He's a kid again. Everything's happy. And then at the end, I knew he was going to relive his father dying. And I didn't expect that this scene actually to be as good as it was. Because it was, like, really good. I really enjoyed this. And it was basically uh, Thor's telling Thorfinn pretty much to, like, give up revenge. Yeah. But... He says that, and of course, Thorfinn isn't going to listen. Um, but the reason why he's not really listening is because that's the only thing that's keeping him going at this point. He's pretty much dedicated his his growing up, his his teen life, just to kill Asgard. So, you know, for him just to turn around and not go after revenge, and he still couldn't do it if he wanted to. I, he could maybe try to run away, but they would hunt him down right. and, you know, kill him. So he's kind of just stuck in it. And there's no real, no real way out. Yeah. Uh, as, as the kids say, no way in, no way out. Uh, he's firmly in the no way out part of this. And uh, I actually, I like this, I like this about... Thorfinn, and he, he's it's kind of like going through the I don't know. He has to go through these mistakes of, of pursuing this revenge, even though even though it's obvious it's like he doesn't really need revenge. I think um, like he wants it, of course, but like I don't think that it it's obviously consuming him, and I think yeah. it's definitely affecting him, and I think that. The way this will progress, I would love it if they have it where his character, when he goes to like fight Asklad for like realzy, uh, that he probably doesn't kill Asklad. I think that would be a, a nice turnout for him, for him to realize like, yeah, I don't need this revenge. When we get when we get to a certain spot. You guys, both you and EA, are going to be so surprised. I don't think when I saw it in the manga, it just caught me off guard. But how this whole revenge thing is, is going to play out is very interesting. I also would like. I have this like theory where like Asklad, he kind of like uses him, the uh, Thorfinn, but like he in this scene. One one of these scenes in this episode actually, he like they have like a moment where it feels very much like father and son, which that's in the thumbnail and in the video title is <laughs> Asclad best dad <laughs> because it was such a, a father son moment, and I hope that or no, well my theory is that eventually Asclad like kind of like accepts him as his son, and like they have like this weird awkward relationship between one another I think that'd be mm-hmm. interesting yeah he he definitely has a lot of wisdom and I think the talk that he had with with Thorfinn basically was trying to tell him that you know and it, it's 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 weird because it's it's kind of goes to the theme of Carolyn Tuesday I'll, we'll talk about that but it's it's out with the old and with the new, basically, that's his. It was whole his whole point. He was telling him that he's going to age one day, and then Thorfinn's going to have the upper hand on him. And there's no real way of avoiding that. That's just that's how nature is itself. Right. Like uh, like when the son finally beats the father in a game of baseball. <laughs> this, 
that's yeah. that's that's the moment where I was like, this is like a weird father and son thing. And I enjoyed this scene. A lot of these scenes in this episode were like really good, unlike the character building and relationship building between a lot of characters. Um, mm-hmm. And I think this last scene did it really well. I think he used like um, the metaphor of like the Roman Empire and the Saxons. Yeah. Which was interesting because he talked about how like the Roman Empire is gone because or the Roman or the Roman Empire basically destroyed in all of the Saxons and then that's all all that's left of the Saxons is these ruins and I thought that was super yeah. interesting and they're definitely heading somewhere with that uh, am I smart, smart enough to catch on not really <laughs> um, we'll get there eventually eventually we will but there's a messenger that comes by and we, we are informed that Pretty much, Prince Canute has been captured. Thorkel, <laughs> like they go to this tent, they they show the actual capture happening, and Thorkel just like rips this whole tent out of the ground. All of the the stakes, the massive stakes made from trees, and they capture Prince Canute. And the messenger is basically like, "Yeah, I'm gonna keep going that way after I form you guys because we're trying to get as much people as possible." And I was like, oh no, <laughs> you just messed up. You done messed up. And of course, Asklad cuts his head off and they bury him in the horse, you know, to remove the evidence. And they're yeah. just going to, they're going to take advantage of this situation and they're going to save Prince Canoe and they're going to get all the gold and all the glory and all of all this and that. And this was an awesome scene. This scene, this scene was funny to me just because... I knew immediately from the way they were building these characters and Asclad and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, he's probably going to kill him. Because that just makes sense. And they're, and they're going to take all of it for themselves. Yeah, they, they really established how ruthless the Vikings were even before this episode. But in this episode, you had two people who were fighting over something so minor so one person got called stupid the oh, other yeah. guy got called a cow thief or something like that I'm and they tours. yeah <laughs> and they had a death match just because of that so uh you know enlisting the help of these guys run those type of risks where you can at any given moment they will kill you to take what they want right right i don't think he knew who they were when he when they uh when they intercepted him because it definitely seemed like, Oh, there's just a bunch of people here that are warriors and mercenaries. So of course, but sad day for him. He got his head chopped off because yeah, that's just the way they roll. Um, also, I think I've said this on the fruits basket podcast before, but I like, writing is very good when you can tell what a character is going to do before they even do it that's that that's the stuff that i appreciate the most and like i said i knew immediately what asklad was going to do as soon as they really when they intercepted this guy and they initially had that conversation it just it's so obvious to me because these these like you said these guys are incredibly ruthless Yeah. Oh, uh, one one thing they did cut out, and I understand why they did it because it was kind of graphic. It's not, it, w- it wasn't necessary because I think there's other ways to do it. But there was a scene where, um, actually, they showed it a little bit, but they didn't really show it how it was in the manga. They were when they were raiding the villages, they grabbed a woman and they were going to rape her and. Wow. Thorfinn was actually around around it, and while it was hap- or it, they didn't actually show it, but they were about to do it, and then Thorfinn just, he didn't try to save her, he just walked out, like it was normal. So that kind of shows you like how desensitized he is to everything, mm-hmm. everything around him, he just does not care. I think we had a moment like this in this episode. Did we not? Or maybe it was last episode, but like it definitely feels like 
Thorfinn, yeah, he is desensitized. He's kind of accepted this life. Because like you said, he has nowhere, nowhere else to go, nothing else to do. So he might as well accept this or else get killed. And um, it's very interesting. I, I wonder if in the future he'll try to fight that any. Um, yeah. He'll reject this life. He'll be like, wait a minute. Look what I've become. I've basically just become a ruthless Viking. And then that's where he gets some character development. But yes. Yeah. He's, he's going to need a wake-up call. For mm. sure. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, yeah. We, we get, like, little hints. But I think... Uh, oh, oh, I don't remember. But, but I have a note here that says Thorfinn misses home. Uh, I guess yeah, from the flashback. But he 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 doesn't really talk. We don't really have any inner monologue from him or anything like that. So all we really get is these flashbacks or these dreams that kind of give us insight to his character, what he's thinking. Because other than that, Thorfinn is <laughs> he just he just does what he's ordered, and that's pretty much it. I do wonder how. The uh, side characters will come back in. Thorfinn's family and stuff like that. I wonder mm -hmm. when they'll be characters and we'll see them. Yeah. Final thoughts. Well, final thought won't be a thought. It'll be more of a question. How do you see this... Ca or, yeah, this rescue of Canute going? Because... We have Aslaz, 100 men, versus Thorkels, 500 men. Yeah, 500. Well, I think it's it's obvious just from how ruthless these these Vikings are. They're, they're, they're probably going to be okay against the 500 men. Now, what will be the twist is the... the th who's, like, what happens when Asklad fights Thorkel or when they interact? Is it going to be like a situation where, where Asklad's like, hey, like if if you like you know, if you let us rescue him, we'll we'll give you something or whatever, something like that maybe, or if it's just going to be a situation where Asklad totally just beats down Thorkel to like establish him as like super duper powerful and all of that. <laughs> Or maybe it's just going to be a, a, a normal fight where it's going to take a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's more what's more likely, but I think the interaction will be interesting because Thorkel has been established as this, this this monster, this monster who has a smile on his face as well, which is really funny. Um, I wonder how the I wonder how the Canute thing will go though as well because Canute has been. He hasn't really talked any, so I wonder, I wonder what if he's gonna have any involvement in the show. But uh, yeah. Well, well, one thing to say about Canoe, because they, I don't even think he said a word so far. But one thing you can kind of just surmise from him is once, as soon as Thorker, Thorkel heard about who was leading the, uh, how much men, they, they had 4,000. As soon as he figured out who was leading him, he completely left the siege and attacked them head on. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. He reminds me of Griffith. That's my he, answer. Yep, he has the whole, he has the whole girly thing going on. Yeah. Um, he just needs that, that 80s, early 90s poofy hair, and we'll be fine. Well, there's, there's some people who can make over people. That happened to Thorfinn. This is true. This is true. Uh, so, I think this is easy. I, I'm giving this a pass. What are you giving it? I'll pass it. I'll call EA real quick. He said he's passing it. No, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait, did he watch the episodes? 
Uh, uh, I'll ask him. Not now, though. No, okay. okay. So you can ask him <laughs> that, but you can't ask him that now. All right. I see how it is. Let's talk about Carol and Tuesday, episode 22, Just Like Heaven, which is a Cure song. And initially, I was like, what? Just Like Heaven, what song is that? And when, like, when the, like, the... the the cards come out to split in between commercials and stuff like that and said the cure i was like how did i not know that i'm like a really big cure fan the cure is great anyways as carol and tuesday get ready to perform a crystal at the grammys angela's mother dies and well angela agrees to perform at the grammys anyways after her performance she collapses and is rushed to the hospital this episode was awesome did do you think this is the best episode yet? Because I thought this was the best episode I've seen. I, I think it was definitely one of the better episodes of Carol on Tuesday. I, I don't see, because I always got to think back to what, what episodes I like. I really enjoy. I really like the episode with Carol's dad coming in. That was a good but I, I, yeah, I definitely think this was a great episode. It, EA was right, because and Angela's mom just dies it was it, things just got really dark um it was it was really it was really shocking and seeing Angela perform through that but then collapse it was a real emotional episode to say the least yeah Th that whole performance was just was great as well because it was a good performance but I liked in the beginning how a little attention to detail where they just didn't perform a picture perfect song you know it wasn't like oh let's just take a, a track from the ost and put it in here and then animate it it was the performance sound a little bit nuanced in that angela's voice is kind of shaky a little, it broke off and some of her timings and some words weren't right um it mm -hmm. felt like before the the music came in before the the whole arrangement started it really felt like like she hadn't been singing for a while. It felt like she hadn't warmed up or anything like that. And I thought that was a nice nice little touch they did. It made it seem more real. Uh, and that's something like that me as like a music nerd and someone who's performed on stage like really like warm my heart to and, and I can really get into that. It's a nice little touch. But Angela's character, yeah. she has pretty much hit rock bottom in the span of a couple episodes, which is kind of incredible to see because so far she's kind of been doing really well, but it's just the string of bad luck has kind of hit her. Yeah. She's been pushing through a lot because I mean, this wasn't really her dream. This was her mom's dream that she's been, you know, she said it herself. She would become a doll just to, achieve this and this was the ultimate goal and then her mom dies before she can even see the performance so you have that angle you have the angle with Tao because uh first she didn't you know that this may be a factor too is that she didn't have the AI she just abandoned that and decided she was going to do it herself but uh Tao didn't come to help he made visit her in the hospital but he didn't he didn't uh go to angela when she asked for help immediately so you know it's a lot of things going on with her she post postponed her album and now this collapsing a lot yeah yeah it's <laughs> it's on screen now but she says i can still sing at the grammys and then her her face it's she looks so drained and so, like, like, uh, like she's just out of it. And at one point, we see her like she's. What medication was she taking? I, I was, I wanted to write down the name, but I forgot to. But she was taking some they sort said, of, a lot, like just oh, popping it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they said what she was taking. She was like. At least uh, I'm not sure. She was like Doctor House, just popping Vicodin. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Oh, that show. Freaking love house. House is great. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so 
the whole thing uh angela's mom dies not her real mother at all but uh what's her name dahlia says that that she actually does love angela as if she were her daughter which i found a very touching moment and i think that's like also for angela that's probably a moment like oh man like she actually even though like she lied to me she still cares this much about me i really like that it was very touching yeah it, it it's hard because angela's mother never really got redeemed in in, in the end because uh, she put she put all the stress on angela but you know we don't even really know if this is what angela really wanted it's just you know she just had the the guts to do everything because that was her mother and that was the only one she really cared about mm -hmm. so you know in that in that aspect it's kind of tragic but at the very least angela got some closure because she was the whole um angela uh angela's mom not being a real mother that really affected her i think that's probably that probably hurt her hurt her the most right. other than of course her being in the hospital yeah it's a big moment for her character um and she took it obviously took the whole thing very poorly but um i wonder where her character is going to go now i think she's probably just gonna have to like go to rehab or something i would assume i have no clue what they're going to do with her i mean i'm i'm rooting for angela i would like to see her continue her dream of singing but again i don't i don't really even know if it's her dream so if she were to retire i wouldn't be surprised yeah um how many episodes are left four because i think this is 26 uh, is it 26 is it 26 or is it 24 i'm not sure either way we're getting pretty close to the end so i think we'll see more of her pretty soon i hope we see more yeah. of her next episode is just to see how she takes to all of this um but Car very interesting carol and tuesday both are throughout this episode they're kind of worried about her and i like i like how they they feel bad about her but it's still one of those things where they don't really know angela so they can't like mm -hmm. go seek her out and like you know be friends with her i feel like i forget sometimes that these characters are kind of pretty much separated even though they their stories are always like kind of connected i guess yeah and i like that it's a uh, it's interesting that's for sure uh, but but for pretty much this whole episode, Carol and Tuesday are just kind of like, for example, at the very beginning, they're kind of getting to know Crystal, which I thought was like a pretty cool moment for them because this is a person they've kind of looked up to and they actually get to perform with her. And they've kind of come a long way. Like they went from performing in a bar to performing at the Grammys, which is like a huge like thing for people. Yeah. And the, and the song they performed, I I absolutely loved the song because not only was the song just good listening to, but I liked the the message and the theme of the song after the fire because it it connected to what was actually happening, especially with um with Angela because the theme is basically, um, you know after you get. You 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 get stronger after struggle. Basically, that's what I got from it because it was, you know, like uh, some of the lyrics was, like uh, new maps are drawn. Um, I, f I forgot what else <laughs> one of the lyrics were, but it was basically after the, after a literal fire, like you'll have flowers blooming from from um, the, the event. Yeah, so. I think that ties into Angela that after all of this is done, she'll come out a better person. I actually thought this was a reference to the King of Anime podcast because I think they watched the episode where where I ranted about Fire Force and they were like, it's okay, Sea Tactics. After the fire maps are redrawn, you're going to do great. You're going to do great. You can make it. There's still hope left. 
There's still hope after Fire Force. <laughs> oh my god, I'm stupid. Uh, but yes, yes, I, I like this. And th th that's a good point, is uh, the lyrics are always fitting to whatever the episode is. And not only does that help with like the story's narrative, it's a different way to tell the story. I, I think that's a an underrated part of this show, is the music, more often then not is like a big story moment and that's why like all the characters have like this almost like shocked reaction like oh my god this music is so great because it's another way to tell you hey pay attention to the lyrics because it's extremely important you do is, is it has story in it that you need to pay attention to but i also think it helps because you can the music feels like it's within that world it doesn't necessarily feel well if we go to like uh, Ezekiel stuff his stuff mm. was all about you know stuff that was happening within that world um, and so you can really easily you know get a better feel for the world and, and see it as like, a, like an actual living breathing thing rather than you know just, just the song you know it's, it's more yeah. than that there's a lot of attention to detail put into it, which I really, I love that kind of stuff. And that's stuff that they did in Cowboy Bebop as well. All the music fit within that world and the the song titles and the lyrics of each song and the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack fit, like were inspired by that world. So I really, I really like that stuff. And Shinichiro Watanabe He's a he's a gosh dang genius when it comes to making worlds that and universes that breathe and are real. Um, he's very good at that. Yeah, this is true. I I really enjoyed this episode. I think this to me is when Carolyn Tuesday is at its best. I mean, we we only got a little bit of it, but when the political stuff is taken out, I think it's just it's cool because you just get the music. You kind of think about the rivalry between Carolyn Tuesday and Angela, and now you have this emotional uh, impact on Angela, kind of on Carol too, because it was her birthday, but we didn't really focus too much on that other than the happy birthday song that Tuesday uh, Yeah, it was a made, nice moment. Which was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. she got the globe, and uh, she was like, oh, you don't like it? And Carol's like, no, it's not that. And she was kind of like tearing up. And I think that was, if if we think back to to what how Carol became an orphan, it was on Christmas, right? Yeah, and pretty was, sure. And I'm pretty sure they mentioned that it was snowy. So I think that was kind of like, I think that was like a good moment for uh, for Carol. And it was it was also because Carol said, mentioned that when she was a kid, when uh, Rody and Tuesday, they were talking about Christmas and how they were going to make the, you know, have decorations for the tree. Uh, Carol mentioned that, like, when she was, when she was growing up, there was no Santa. So that may be the first gift that she's ever gotten on Christmas. Damn. Didn't even think, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, it's a great moment. Uh, did you catch Steve Aoki in the audience? did not they one of the guy who was hosting the show who looks like one to one the guy from cowboy bebop the, the girl and the guy uh that informed people on the bounties like he looked exactly like that guy but this steve was in the crowd steve alki and uh the guy who looked like that was like oh yeah and hey steve and you just see the guy with the beard and the glasses and i'm like that's steve alki they put him in here what the hell Okay. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, they have Denzel Curry, so there's another celebrity in Carolyn Tuesday. Uh, they also go over the nominees. I don't know if you caught this or you've been paying attention, but this was hilarious to me. Uh, some of the nominees for the Grammy. Um, one caught my attention. Lonesome Clarence, who dressed like a country music star. And he had a guitar yep. and like a 10 gallon hat. And I was like, this is what you, who, how is he nominated? 
Like, what what musical taste do these people like? Everything's bigger in Texas, because apparently there's a Texas in Mars. There is? I remember Gus talking about Texas to... Was it the... God damn it. Who... What was his name? I, I remember he was drinking with um the producer. How did I forget his name? Oh. Damn it. I just call him Rick Rubin. Yeah. Yeah. The the shits producer. Yeah. Die yeah, uh, he, he... perform the song and die and then be reborn. Yeah. He he was talking they were drinking and he mentioned something about Texas. I was like, wait. What? So yeah, they they have cowboy hats and other Texas stereotypes. Wonder if in on Texas, the one on Mars, everybody dresses like that, and they're like, "Howdy, partner. How you doing? <laughs> Maybe. Good day down here in Texas, in Mars. We got our space cows off here to the left, and on our right." We got nothing but vast desert. It ain't that vast, though. It's just a mirror to make it look like it's bigger than it actually is. Everything's smaller in this I'm... Texas. We don't. We don't actually know too much. I mean, we know we're on Mars, but we don't really know too much about the world. We don't know if there's like different languages. We don't know if there's like different aliens. 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 We need aliens. I mean, if Steve Aoki is living on Mars at this point, I mean, he's probably like 40-something, so... If he's still... I don't know how he's still alive. He should be, like, pushing 120 at this point. <laughs> so, I don't know what's going on. But it's happening. What are we given this, uh... This episode, I thought this is once again probably my favorite episode so far. Gonna have to be honest here, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll pass it for now. Passing it as well, and we're gonna do some shoutouts here at the end. But don't click off because after we do the shoutouts, we're gonna go into Nakama Club, where we're gonna talk about a new episode of Monica Magica, Monica Magica episode six. Um. Where can they find you, EA? Well, uh, yeah, I just put out a new video today, and on Snafu, uh, reacted to the dub, and it's okay, it's okay. Uh, I saw the new It movie recently. That was, you know, it wasn't as good as the first one, but. It's it's fun, you know. I definitely recommend people go out there and watch it. Um, yeah, uh, almost two hundred subscribers. Well, no, did I reach two hundred subscribers? Uh, you did. I did. Uh, thanks for reminding me, Sasuke. I, you know, saving the world. It's a little hard to focus on the YouTube channel sometimes. Put up a lot of videos oh. recently. You definitely want to go check those out for sure. What are you going to say, Sati? I will. I was going to say it was good to hear from you, Senpai. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, you know. It's, uh, it's good to be here on this podcast. And, uh, yeah. Uh, expect some new videos soon. Going to buckle down. Going to put out some new stuff. Uh, you know, links in the description. So, you you know, definitely go check out my channel, Everything Animated. Uh, yeah. That's really all I got to say. Uh, yeah. All right, thank you, thank you, EA. Sasuke the Savage, shout yourself out. Uh, hi guys, I'm Sasuke. Uh, I think I'm going to have some videos coming out Monday, Tuesday, because uh, can I don't know what Astra ended. I actually picked that up. I, I don't even know if I mentioned that on the sh on the show yet, but yeah, I picked that back up and it ended. It was it was cool. It was cool. And uh, QQ. That's another series I'm going to be talking about. And, of course, Unordinary Videos, because that series is so fun. But that's pretty much it. Hi, I'm C-Tactics. Uh, 
Let's talk about, uh, oh god, we're on the wrong stuff here. Wrong stuff. Oh, wrong stuff. Wrong stuff. Get that out of here. Let's, let's go switch over to Nakama Club, where we're going to talk about Monica Magica, episode yeah. 6. This just can't be, right? The souls of magical girls are housed within their soul gems. Their bodies were simply hollow. Because of this revelation, the girls are kind of left in shock and a little mad. Uh, this episode was crazy as fuck. First of all, it was crazy for one reference. Kyoko was playing DDR, but more specifically, she wasn't playing the DDR that we know. She was playing Dog Drug Reinforcement. <laughs> yeah. I don't, Damn I, copyright. I don't have a earthly idea how they came up with Dog Drug Reinforcement. That does not sound like a... Doesn't sound like a game. Doesn't sound like anything I'd want to play anytime soon. Imagine if they were like... Announced like the next Call of Duty and they're like, Hey guys. Call of Duty coming back. New Call of Duty. Call of Duty... What was it? Dog Drug Reinforcement. For Modern Warfare. Uh, well, in the... In the context of Call of Duty, that doesn't sound that bad, but still sounds weird. <sighs> but yeah, and <laughs> I like um, uh, I like at the beginning of this episode. There's like the you know continuation from the last episode, and Kube says in reference to Homura, she's planning something. Yeah. Just wanted to point that out. q uh... Just saying. Fuck q -Bay. Why are you so suspicious of q -Bay? q -Bay is always there trying to get them to make wishes. Yep. We can't... You can't trust this little rat... Cat... Bunny... Thing. It's evil. It wants you to wish for things so it can take your soul. It's the devil. It's Satan. Ah, well, Cuba is a character. He's a fun character. But um, uh, yeah, Homura. She she, despite the whole uh, what you feel about Cuba, Homura is definitely suspicious to say the least. No, because... Homura's best girl. Well. She's she has something going on with her. She she knew Kyoko's name, and apparently Kyoko doesn't. She doesn't remember meeting. So yeah, there's that. I'm gonna tell you, revelation here, Sonsky. She just all she did was use yellow pages. <laughs> and then she just found the redhead lolly. Exactly, red and it said redhead lolly Kyoko, who's also a magical girl. That's what it said. She it was public. She shouldn't have made that public in the yellow pages. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. She did. Damn it. We learned in this episode that uh, with enough uh, grave seeds or grief seeds, there's I think there is multiple ways they said it. I'm not sure. I have bad hearing. Somebody can correct me. Uh, but if they have Gre more of those, grief seed. Oh, okay. So if they have more of those, they'll pretty much be able to use any kind of magic they want, except. Uh, the more they have, the more polluted their souls will get. It's... It's, um... Yeah, uh... The, the grief seeds... You can, you can have them in uh, bulk. It's, it's more of the more magic you use, the more polluted... The more oh, polluted okay. your... That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Because the grief seeds basically take away the... I don't even know what to call it, uh, but they they make sure that your soul gem is clear, mm -hmm. which is uh yeah. Then Cubay just like eats it. He <laughs> just eats it. Well, well, there's another thing. Cubay eats it, uh, because he's a demon monster and he's not cool and he probably wants you to smoke cigarettes too. So fuck him. Uh, yeah, maybe. I do not trust. I mean. I do not trust. Just don't. Go ahead. I, I, no, no, just... 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, a 20 minute rant on Cubay here in a moment. Cubay is just he's just uh, you should trust him. He's just a cat. I sh definitely not gonna trust Cubay. Are you Cubay? Because you're trying to get me to trust Cubay, and I don't feel right. Just make a wish. I ain't making a wish. I don't want to be a magical girl. I don't I shave my legs. Talent. You have talent. You have a lot of potential to be a magical girl. Wow. Just make a contract. But here's the thing. I wouldn't even look good in a skirt. Debatable. Debatable. <laughs> All right, we're having some weird conversation now. <sighs> yeah, um, the, there's another thing, um, because Homura and Kyoko actually meet up after Homura stops the war, and she mentions that there is a witch that is coming in two weeks. What and what the hell was it? The name Valporgus? Knock or something like that. Something. Well, Porg is not. It was some weird name. Something but yeah, from there's like a Bible witch Black, I think. <laughs> I did. Yeah, never seen it, so I wouldn't know. They do I'll take your word for it. Purgus in the Bible Black. They do Damn. Indeed. I I know this, so you don't have to know it. Ah, <sighs> they need a magical girl then. Fine. I wish to never not know know any Bible Black references. Uh, oh my God, Etchy Donut says shave your legs. See tactics. Shave them now. Yeah, make the contract. It's fun being a magical girl, and you get one wish. Is it like Kaon? Do I just get uh, eat, drink tea and eat cake all day? You can do that. Hmm. Maybe suffer some consequences but you know still fun this episode kind of shows sayaka losing sex speed says maho shoujo bin <laughs> damn it you need it <laughs> oh but sayaka is is losing a little a grip a little bit she's obviously very affected by by after turning into a magic girl and what homura is doing uh, she's getting a little angry, which is an interesting character development for her because initially she's, you know, I say she's like a, a sweet, a sweet girl. She's not, you know, very mean or anything like that. And she makes the wish to, you know, save her friend. So she obviously seems like a nice person, but she's just, she's un, she doesn't trust. She's, she's, she's she doesn't trust these other people. She's a little paranoid about it, and Monica is trying to like ex say like you know she's saying a bunch of stuff about Homer. And Monica's like, no, that's that's not true. And Sayaka's like, what would happen if your whole family died? What about that, Monica? Huh? <laughs> you always gotta ask that question in any situation. What just, would you do? I just destroyed people's ears. Saika yeah, didn't. blame C, not me. Saika didn't. <laughs> oh my god. Cute RB says, well, uh, well, Pergus knocked is going to be insane. God damn. That's the name? Yeah, well, Pergus knocked. You know, super easy. That's the name. Uh, But yeah, so what do you think about Saika going crazy? Uh, This, yeah, it's an interesting re revelation I, and the thing is it's not like sayaka was in the wrong for how she was feeling because for sure not yeah yeah it comes from a it comes from an actual moral high ground because she's basically saying why would she let some other people die just so she could get a grief seed out of it just so she can get a, a reward her job she feels as a magical girl is to protect people not to just thrive as a magical girl and just have longevity but of course Kyoko doesn't see it that way and uh, Homura doesn't see it that way because Homura even said that Kyoko is more fit to be a magical girl because Saika is too uh, she's too emotional about you know and she's too attached to um, right. 
you know, helping others. She's... She, uh... Yeah, she's selfless, and she's not selfish. Which I think that's a, that's a cool initial s sequence between Saika and Kyoko, is, you know... Kyoko, she doesn't care about anything or anyone. She's totally selfish. And I was thinking about that, and I'm like... You know, it, it really... it's It's... That's probably, yeah, that's probably the best way to be as a magical girl. You can't rely on others or you can't, you know, you can't be selfish. You have to be a little selfish because otherwise, you know, the wish, especially, it's not going to work out. Which we saw Sayaka go to this guy's house and she kind of like, you know, he he's playing his violin or cello or whatever the fuck he's playing. Uh, and Sayaka's <laughs> like, was going to like, you know come in but she did it um so i think that's a um, psyche's world i i have a theory that that she's gonna end up regretting this wish and she's gonna going to uh she's gonna get rejected by the, by that kid that's what that's what i think and i think she's gonna have to face some hard truths and, and say yeah maybe maybe it wasn't worth it maybe i you know Maybe I was trying to get him to love me rather than doing something out of my own selfishness, I guess. Well, I guess that in itself is kind of selfish, though, right? Because, like, you're making yeah. a wish to get somebody to, to love you, which I think Kyoko even brings up, maybe. But we get this. The, the... <laughs> Kyoko threatened to break Kyo bro oh. Kyoke Kyo Kyosuke's legs. She's. I could, she offered it like it was something that was that Saiko would have just agreed to. She's like, "Yeah, I could break his legs for for you if you want." Yeah, she's fine. Great. She's great. <laughs> you know what, Kyoko? I have turned a new leaf. Let's go in there and break that kid's legs. Uh, yeah, it's normal. Fun. So we have this big confrontation at the end. With, with all of them are there and one of my favorite quotes of this like last big battle scene or whatever it's not really a battle but this last scene Kyoko says the annoying bitch has an annoying friend <laughs> I thought that was awesome yeah. Kyo that, Kyoko is very uh, very ill ill mannered I'll say and I love it yeah, she's she's Lancer from Fate. She's, yeah, she's the lolly version of of Lancer, and I I love it. It's fantastic. Um, but this is where we learn that their bodies are basically hollow, and it's their soul gems that contain, of course, their soul. Um, yeah. What did you think about uh, this occurring? Because I I think it's another thing if Cube not sharing the full truth here and kind of misleading based off you know not giving out the knowledge see i think with this this is where you can start to suspect hubei because he did not give them information like that but then again what i take it as is hubei being pragmatic and him probably experiencing other magical girls taking information like that with the soul gems and then freaking out and it not helping the situation so instead he chooses to leave that information out because Cube is, is weird because Cube will give you the information if you just ask but of course why would you ask a random question like that but um yeah with the, the whole soul gem things they can't they're original bodies can't be a hundred meters away from it so it's it's like what Kyoko said they're basically like zombies they could their hearts could be crushed they could bleed out but as long as they have magic their bodies can keep going so they're not they're not really even human anymore they could like actually listen to the new blink 182 songs and and not get hurt by them technically <laughs> <laughs> they could they could listen uh, to that atrocity and, and be okay with it. All they have to do is use yeah. magic to to fix their eardrums. Opportunity. Or they could eat, but could they survive the new Green Day song? I don't think they could. 
Now that song's another level of bad. We don't know how much how much magic can do. We don't there's know. some there's some things that magic can't right can't yeah. come back from. Can't come back from bad music. Uh <laughs> I don't even hate these bands. <laughs> I like these bands. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, Ma- Monica takes the soul gem and throws it, and it lands on a truck, and Sayaka's body just dies, and Homura goes yep. to get it. And I think this is, like, uh, finally a realization that probably to, hopefully to Sayaka, that, hey, Homura isn't a bad person. Homura is actually best girl, uh, and we should trust her. <laughs> Uh, because if if Homer is as bad as Sayaka said she is, why would she go and try to get that soul gem? But I think that's also another question is, Homer knew. She had to know about that, because why did she immediately go after it? So what the hell's going on with Homer? Uh, stuff. Stuff. <laughs> stuff i can't i can't say anything i can't even speculate fear of spoilers uh i'm sure I, we gotta ask ea next week about this i'm sure the next episode will will prompt a, a question like this but man i have no idea what's going on with homura uh like i said i have seen the show before i remember absolutely nothing this whole episode to me was like I don't, I like I it was like I was watching something completely new. Like I remember absolutely nothing past like episode 1. So yeah. Um I don't I don't know where Homer's character is going. My theory is that since she knows about this, um maybe Cube <sighs> possibly knows does actually know about Homer. But maybe Homer, maybe Homer's wish was something, like forget about Homer, maybe. So like Homer has like an advantage, but then why would she be protective of Madoka? Lots of questions there. Lots of questions. I'm not sure where to where to go. But any closing thoughts? I guess. Oh, oh well, yeah. We didn't talk about this, but there was a talk between Madoka and her mother, which it was kind of a cool talk. Um, may have not been the best thing because, of course, that led to Madoka. Oh, yeah, she was like sometimes, snatching us. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you gotta make you the wrong gotta, decision. Yeah, you gotta do something bad sometimes. I'm like, yeah, you're gonna get her Madoka to wish. Madoka definitely something. did that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I get what she would. The, I get what she was trying to say, because I, I, what I gather, and I think she did actually summarize it. She was basically saying like, "You're young right now. You, you can afford to make mistakes because you can bounce back from it," uh-huh. which is true. You don't want to make though. You don't want to make um, mistakes as you get older, because then you'll have to face more dire consequences. But. <laughs> Little did she know that Madoka is running around with magical girls. So, yeah, that one mistake that she made almost killed her friend. I thought this was gonna be like, are you gonna get her to like? Is she gonna like take this advice and wish for something, and then Madoka's gonna have to be a magical girl forever? God, don't you dare do it, Madoka's mom. Don't you dare. <laughs> uh, final thoughts for me. This is this was awesome. This was like, I loved this episode. Things are like, every episode is getting more, f- like faster paced. More stuff is happening. It's getting more interesting. Like what, like the things they're not telling us has me so interested and so intrigued. This was definitely a right choice to do this weekly. This I think this show really works on on our format. So yeah, I guess that's it. For, for yep. Nakama Club and for the King of Anime Podcast this week. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, of course, make sure to give this video a like if you made it this far. It really does help out. And tell us down in the comments below what were some of your favorite anime this week. Uh, so, yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>